If you remember in the last lesson, all of the times we had to write the equation, we were easily able to get the y-intercept, but that's not realistic. You don't always have the y-intercept. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to still end up writing those equations, but we're going to figure out a way to do it without ever knowing the y-intercept, or well, at least without knowing it right away. What we do is we use this formula called the point-slope formula, which is down here in this core concept section. So this is the point-slope formula. Uh, it's right down here in the algebra section. And it might look super crazy, but, you know, as with all of the crazy-looking formulas, I got you. Um, and if you recognize, we have x1 and y1 in the formula. Remember when we did the slope formula, that just represented the first point. So instead of needing two points, we just have one point. So uh, it also has the slope and it has x and y. Let's scroll down to example one. It wants us to write an equation in point slope form, which is our new special form that goes through the point negative eight three and has a slope of one fourth. So so if you look up above at the formula, it says that we need to identify the slope and we need to know an x1, y1 point. Ah, we already know that, right? So we know that negative 8 is x1 and 3 is y1. So now you just have to plug it in your formula. I'll color code it so you kind of understand what is getting plugged in, but you obviously don't need to make it fancy colors. So y minus y1, which is 3, equals 1 fourth times x plus 8. Do you know why it's x plus 8 and not x minus 8? Hopefully, you said it's because minus a negative is the same as a plus. Now, this is as far as they want us to go because it says to write it in point slope form. In a moment, we're going to do a little extra work to this formula, but that's it for example one. So just to kind of spell out the steps, here's how you do it. The first thing is that you find the slope. And then you use the slope and a point, which it would be in the form x, y to write an equation in point slope form. In example two, we're gonna take that one extra step, but let's just do steps one and two right now. If you look at the picture, this one would actually not work with m and b because we can't really see where it's crossing the y-axis. It would maybe cross like right here somewhere. And we could guess what that number is, but we don't know exactly what it is, so we have to use this other formula. So, so we can find the slope, using two points, so they gave us two points, so I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, so that's down four, that's negative, and then I go to the right two, so the slope is negative four over two, which reduces to negative two. If you're at the newbie phase and you want to write negative two over one or negative four over two, that's okay, but I'm going to suggest against it. Then what we're going to do is they actually gave us two points, but if you look at the step, we only need a point. So I usually like to pick positives if I can, so I'm going to use 1, 2 in my formula. So I'm going to write my point slope formula, which is step 2. y minus 2 equals negative 2 times x minus 1. So that was from this point because that was x1, y1. So this is where example 1 wanted us to stop, but this says that you have to write it in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, and that does not look like that at all. So what you do is you just distribute this and make it look a little simpler. So you get y minus 2 equals negative 2x plus 2, and then you move the 2 over, and when you combine, then you're all done. That was crazy. So we get y equals negative 2x plus 4, and we're done. This one takes a couple extra steps because, like I told you in the other lesson, this just means the point 4, negative 2. 
and this just means the point 84, which would be okay, but we then now have to calculate the slope ourselves. OMG, so much work. Not really. Um, so let's do it. Uh, we have to find the M, which is going to be Y2 minus Y1. Oh, I, sh I need to label. So we'll label X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Okay, now I can do it. 4 plus 2, be careful of your integers, over 8 minus 4. That gives you 6 over 4, which reduces to 3 over 2. So the slope is 3 over 2. Now I don't know the B value, the y-intercept, because I don't have that information, right? I don't have a 0 anywhere. So I'm going to use my point-slope formula to find it. So I'll do y minus 4 equals 3 halves times x minus 8. I could have used negative 2 and 4 for my y2 and my y1, I'm sorry, y1 and x1, but it really doesn't matter. So now you just distribute and you get y minus 4 equals 3 halves x minus omg, fraction times an integer, um, that is 24 over 2, which is 12. So let me just bring it up here to just finish it up. y minus 4 equals 3 halves x minus 12. I have to add 4, and I get y equals 3 halves x. So that's very sloppy, 3. 3 halves x plus, nope, minus 8. All right, so that's our equation. Let's circle it and move on to example four. All right, pause the video, read the story, and then I'll go through the steps with you. All right, so first thing is we have to understand what they're asking. They give us this table of foam hands and how much they cost. And the first thing they want to know is, can this be modeled by a linear equation? So linear equations have that constant rate of change, so we'll look for that first. Um, then if we can write an equation, then they want us to write one. So let's see if we can find a pattern. So this is going up by twos. You can easily see that. So there's a constant pattern here. So if there's a constant pattern in the y values, then it is linear. So let's do some subtraction. So 46 minus 34, that would be a difference of 12. So is it a constant difference of 12? So that's plus 12. That Yep, so it's constantly increasing by 12. So it is a linear relationship. So the first part of my answer is that, yes, it can be modeled. And then they asked me to explain, and my answer is there's a constant rate of change, right? It would be two foam hands cost $12. That would be like what the slope is. So we actually calculated that. Wow. The only thing you just need to be careful of is that when you do slope, the y values go on top. Now, if you look at the table, the way it's set up, we usually put the x values on the top and the y values on the bottom. So this would be cost over um, number. So the cost change is 12, and each $12, it's two foam hands. So the slope is 6. The constant rate of change, which we would call the slope, is 6. So that's $6 for every foam hand. And hopefully that makes sense to you, because every time you get two more foam hands, you increase by $12. So I'm going to mark that as the slope, and now I'm going to use my point-slope formula to find an equation. So I'll just pick this very first point. It doesn't really matter what you pick again, as long as you plug it in correctly. So I have y minus 34 equals 6 times x minus 4. You just have to simplify, so you get y minus 34 equals 6x minus 24, and when you add 34 to both sides, it's y equals 6x plus 10.
If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.